Hey guys, we are back with another episode of the Show Your Work series, where we talk to talented creatives about their work and techniques. This time, Jake Alexander is here to tell us about his illustration techniques and how he recently won the Macmillan Prize for Children's Picture Book Illustration. Join us to find out more about his unconventional topic for his picture book and how he is using Procreate as his main tool. So this time we have Jake Alexander with us and he's also an illustrator. You actually know Toby and George. Yeah, I do, yeah. You went to the same uh, course or yeah, class? Yeah, same course, same year, yeah. And you had your final project recently finished, mm -hmm. so yep. you also just graduated. And That's that, scary. <laughs> scary, yeah. And also I heard that um, uh, you told me about this uh, children's book that you worked on. Was that your final project? Yeah, yeah. So um, I did like three mini projects, for the final major project, and one of them, or well, the last one was the children's book I did, yeah. Cool. And I heard that you actually won a prize already. Yeah, which is a <laughs> bit um, surreal. But, uh, yeah. Cool. We will talk about that a bit later. But yeah, so um, before getting into your work, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? So you are from um, England, south of England? Yeah, uh, I'm from Winchester, which is about uh, 50 minutes away from where we are, Bournemouth. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. And you, you always been into art and illustration or was this like a clear path that you followed? Um, I wouldn't say it was like a, a clear path, but you know, I've always like been interested in art. Like it was, it was like a choice between, I think, concept art and illustration. And I, I didn't have the patience for concept art. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at your work. Um, first of all, maybe, uh, just tell us a bit about like the picture book or this uh, the children's book. Sure, yeah. Um, so I wanted to do a picture book about systemic racism, which is a bit of a heavy topic for a children's book. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to like use subtlety, like humor. Um, so like juxtaposing the image with like the naivety of like the text that I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of stemmed from my previous project in uni which was pre-major, which I really struggled with because I struggled with trying to find a context for the images I was producing. Mm -hmm. I just thought of like, I wanted to do a narrative. I wanted to do something about social issues. I wanted to have like a constraint of a context. Um, so yeah, I decided to do a, a picture book, which was quite a heavy undertaking for the amount of time I had left. But How much time did it take to put it together? Uh, I think like six weeks. Wow. Yeah. So you, that was really intense. Yeah, it was really intense. <laughs> yeah, I think. Like, how many, how, how long did it, uh, the, the final book end up in? Um, so it's a traditional length of a children's book. So I think 32 pages. Mm -hmm. So a quick cover, end papers, title page, and 12 story spreads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I sort of like cheated a little bit. So I just made each spread full bleed image. And mm -hmm. then for some of them, I didn't do the backgrounds. So I just had the characters to like, I tried to cut away what wasn't necessary to the story. Like the background just wasn't necessary mm -hmm. for the story I was telling. So. Do you mind showing us some bits of it? Yeah, yeah sure. So this is the mm -hmm. first spread. By the way, this is really cool feature in Procreate, whoever is using Procreate. And when you are in a gallery, you just uh, do the zoom in or pinch. Yeah. And then it goes into this presentation mode or slideshow and you can flick through it. I, I really like that feature. Yeah. Sometimes I do a duplicate. Uh, if I work on something, I do a duplicate and then keep working on the duplicate. And then I can go quickly back and forth between the yeah. versions or the alternatives that I create. Yeah. So I, I always start out doing like thumbnail sketches mm -hmm. to try and like figure out composition, perspective, mm -hmm. like what's working, what's not working. And then I'll either take a photo of it with the iPad or scan it in and send it across and then just build up layers on top of it. So I still have like the looseness of like the thumbnail sketch just so like I'm working to a constraint but not like it has to be perfect within the lines and like mm -hmm. just me personally, I don't like working like that. Now it makes sense. And uh, do you mind showing us your layers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. It'll look really messy. <laughs> I can see you've already used the text 
yeah, feature. Yeah, tech- I was so relieved that that <laughs> came out just before I... So these are actually... Is this also actual text? Or I th- it looked like you, you drew that. Yeah, I did. So I um, there's a website. I can't remember the name of it, but you can print out a template. Mm-hmm. And then I just got like a basic pen and I wrote out my own alphabet. You scan it back into the website. They create the text file. Is it font self? No, I think it's called like calligrapher or something like that. Is it a free... Yes, yeah, free. It's free tool. Oh, cool. Well, we'll include that in the links yeah. once we find the, the actual URL. Uh, that sounds really cool because I know about FontSelf, but that's a paid plugin for Illustrator. Yeah. But yeah, so so you actually created a font, yeah, basically. Yeah, and then it was so useful because I was just able to port that font straight into Procreate and just type immediately onto the... Brilliant. Let, let's see how it looks. So if you create a new font... Yeah, sure. I mean, um, uh, um, blah, blah, blah. So what you do is... You... Text, text, yeah. It's a bit hidden away, the, yeah, it is, the feature. Yeah. <laughs> but if you go to edit style, and then it has all the list of different mm. fonts. And this is mine, so the picture book font. Picture book. Nice one. Did you share that somewhere on Behance, or are you planning to share it? Um, you yeah. should sell it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's, uh, it's that, or if you are not selling it, it's a, Behance is a really good place. Like, let's say if you... Are you planning to do a project on Behance about the children's book? Yeah, yeah. I, I need to update it, to be honest. Like, I've managed to stay on top of my portfolio and Instagram, but I need to get back onto it. I saw that you started using Behance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you created your own font, which mm-hmm. you used. Did you use that, that throughout the whole book? I did, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Makes sense. It's nice. I can see that you have um, the environment in mm-hmm. one group. So that's a lot. Of that's that. a lot of stuff. Yeah. So I can see that you have your original uh, thumbnail sketch. Yeah. So yeah, as, well, as you can see, it's like super basic. Mm. Just, I think it was only like that big. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was literally just to work out perspective, composition. And you told me that you prefer to do these thumbnail sketches on paper. Yeah, just, just so I can like see all my thumbnails like together. The looseness allows me, like, even though the iPad has, like, really freaked me out in terms of, like, being loose and being quick, mm-hmm. personally, I just prefer it. And then, so no matter how much time you spend in Procreate, you would still keep the paper uh, in your workflow just yeah, to, as the initial definitely. stage. Do you use the laptop or computer, like Photoshop Illustrator at all, or it's, um, like, now fully Procreate everything? I think I, think I still use Photoshop for, like, formatting and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if a piece is really giving me trouble, then I'll take it into Photoshop and just do like adjustments because mm-hmm. I still think it's slightly um, more powerful than, than Procreate. Yeah, just figuring out like hierarchy, visual hierarchy, tones. The picture book, did you put them together in InDesign at the yeah, end? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the competition, I had to send it off as a PDF mm-hmm. before I'd even finished it. So it had roughs within the booklet. Mm-hmm. As well, but to send it off to get printed, yeah, I needed to properly format everything into mm-hmm. InDesign. And uh, tell us a bit more about this, uh, the Macmillan uh, competition. So, was this recommended to you by one of your lecturers? Yeah, so we're well, we, we have to enter one competition for um, our professional practice unit, mm-hmm. which runs alongside Major Project. And um, I entered the children's book to Macmillan Children's Book Prize. So it's like the main sort of children's book competition mm-hmm. for illustration. Um, didn't expect to hear anything back, obviously, because <laughs> I hadn't done a children's book before. <laughs> and like my friends, like they are amazing children's book like illustrators. Mm. Yeah. So I was completely like shocked when I heard back and they had said I um, one, which was a... <laughs> so you won the overall prize? Yeah, I won the Amazing. overall prize. How many, how many entries? Did you know how many entries there were? I have no idea. No. Well, a lot, I guess. I, I, I think so, yeah. Is it international? Or? I think it is international, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I made this book as a special imprint that Macmillan do called, I think, Two Hoots. Mm-hmm. And that's more like curated age range. It's a bit more loose. Mm-hmm. So like but more of a wide age, age range. Hmm. Like, because it's dealing with such a heavy topic, like, I knew it would probably skew, like, a bit more older. Even though these these things happen to children hmm. of this age, like, in real life. 
it gave me some leeway, I think, in what I could show, mm. even though I was still trying to be like subtle with it. Cool. So I think this is a great example of um, someone who has never worked on that, that, like a type of project, in this case, a children's book. Mm -hmm. But by really pushing yourself, like in this case, the university project was like the task, but pushing yourself and also believing in like entering a competition actually led you winning something huge and just at the start of your career. If, you, if someone told you that you will be winning this competition before you started this project, uh, would you have uh, like believed in that or would you have said like, yes, I can totally win this? No, not at all. Um, mm. I think the, um, like the new context of the picture book just allowed me to push my practice further. Mm -hmm. I feel like constraints are really useful mm -hmm. when you're, when you're working. Um, and I, I think it is important to try like new contexts, um, new areas that you might not originally see your work fitting. Mm -hmm. Cause you might, it might lead to something like completely new that you're like really interested in. Like at the start of first year, I did not think at all that I'd be doing a, a picture book for my like final project, but mm -hmm. here we are. <laughs> yeah. Now that you, you know that you won this prize, will this help to give you more confidence in doing other projects? Do you feel like, okay, this actually now justifies you being an illustrator or even without this award, you would have been able to like carry on. Do you think this gave you a boost now? Um, or? I mean, I think it, it's definitely given me like a boost in terms of like validation. Mm -hmm. um, but even if I hadn't have heard back, I'd still be doing what I'm doing because I love like drawing, painting. Like, mm. And it's, it's amazing that I get to do this, well, hopefully, for a living. <laughs> yeah. And do you think you will be uh, entering other contests in the future? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, it's, I think it's always worth just putting your work out there because you, like, you never know like, if you hear back or... Mm -hmm. like, I obviously didn't think I'd hear back from, from this competition. So definitely, if you, if you think you've got like, a piece that you think is strong enough, then mm -hmm. definitely like, submit it to as much as you can. And also, I guess it's it's good to attend like events where yeah. you meet people. Like we met yeah. on this event. We've done the Behance Portfolio event, and that's where we've seen your work. And uh, I think generally both competitions and events are a great way to like just expand the possibilities and and have a bigger reach. You mentioned this, but this is also something we always talk about. That uh, I mean, in terms of like our team that. It's you have to find a healthy balance between spending time on, let's say, Instagram, looking at other people's work and you actually doing your own work yeah. because it can it can easily backfire if you look at other people's work too much. Like you said, you end up copying them. Yeah. But also, uh, which I'm really aware of, you feel like, oh, my God, every, everyone is so much better than me. And then it's just, just that it, you can get into a very negative mood. I think the most important thing about style is your own personal voice mm -hmm. i think when you're like being authentic with like issues or topics that you actually care about mm -hmm. and that shines through like in your work i think like it's easy to copy um other people's work but you can't copy their voice and i think mm -hmm. that's what sets illustrators apart yeah like People are successful because of their voice, not just because mm. of like, aesthetically, it could be incredibly like pleasing. Mm. But I think if they're, if they're passionate about what they do, that shines through in their work. And I mm. think that's what makes them successful. What do you think inspires you most uh, to sit down and draw? I can see like you have a lot of landscapes, for example, the, that rooftops project. Yeah, if, so what was the inspiration for this or what, what was the theme? So I wanted to look at nostalgia. So do like a really like loose narrative, mm -hmm. like almost implied. Um, so these are houses that I grew up in because mm -hmm. my family like moved around a lot when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So it's incredibly personal to me. Like, I don't think people would get it just by looking at a series of like rooftops. The full meaning behind yeah, yeah, them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I wanted to try like, so this is at the start when I got my iPad. So I wanted to try like different like times of day, weathers, mm -hmm. just explore with like mark making. 
Did you use photo references or you use something else to get these or did you actually go back and take some pictures? Um, I went back to a couple of the houses to take some mm -hmm. pictures, but like for a lot of them, because they're in like different cities, I use like Google Street View and like... Smart. <laughs> <laughs> just messed around with like the, the colors, the weathers, mm -hmm. yeah. altered the perspectives mm -hmm. just to make it like my own. This one is really nice. Yeah. Winter scene. And I, I tried to pair the weathers like with the memories I had of that house. So mm -hmm. this house that snowed really heavily that year. I just try and like absorb as much as possible. So would that be like films, like video games, books? So I just, just try and take different elements, like what it means to you, and then you project it back out. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's like how inspiration for me works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you think as someone who is uh, starting in their career in illustration, do you think it's something that can be done nine to five is it something you can like structure in a way like other type of work like even graphic design i feel like this is a bit more easy to structure while with illustration you have to have that flow and and have to be in the mood so do you think it like most illustrators would be able to work nine to five or it's more like something that's ad hoc and whenever the inspiration strikes i think it's a case by case, like personal basis, because mm -hmm. people work completely differently. Like some of my friends prefer working like late at night, like mm -hmm. in the morning. Um, I think I work better in the morning, which is like a struggle because I've got to wake up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think I think it's different um, in terms of like actually like collating inspiration. I think that's completely different as well. Like you could be on a walk and see something that triggers something, and mm -hmm. see a film, like listen to a song. Like it's, I think it's different for everyone. Really? So I can see, for example, these and uh, the work that you've done. Yeah. I guess this was like a visit to Cornwall. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm. And you've done a few paintings while you were there. Yeah. Did you base these on photos you took or did you do like a plein air when you sat down and you were actually painting while, while um, being in that place? These were based on photos. Mm -hmm. um, just because back then I didn't have the iPad, this was a um, graphics tablet. Mm -hmm. So I think it would have been a bit of a struggle to <laughs> yeah. special lands and get the laptop and run. <laughs> but since you have the iPad, have you ever done like actual going out and painting while um, looking at something? Have you tried that? I haven't tried it yet, to be honest. Like, I feel like I'm a bit too precious about it at the moment. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be like waving around my iPad in case I get like mugged. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> um, but no, I, I usually I just prefer to stick to pencil and paper mm. if I'm like traveling and stuff. And then you just take pictures and use those as references. Yeah, I use Pinterest a lot as well. Mm. So I'll come up with the, um, the idea for an image. Mm -hmm. And then if I need to refine it, I'll look at photo references that I've taken or um, if I can find anything similar mm. on Pinterest, see what other illustrators have done, see if there are any photos, like, yeah. So apart from things that you already mentioned, are there any artists that in like specifically inspire you or their style or just generally the, the themes that they are working on? Too many to count, to be honest. Um, but like, a couple of children's book illustrators, editorial illustrators like Working Today, um, mm -hmm. John Classen, mm -hmm. uh, his book, I Want My Hat Back, is so, so good. <laughs> and it, he, he just uses like the bare bones of like movement, like deadpan humor, like the characters hardly move at all. It's their eyes. And it's like, it's so, so like sophisticated, like <laughs> it's incredible. Okay. So that's the, that's the cover. It's a funny title as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then there's like editorial illustrators like Paul Boy. And this, this style is quite different from mine, but just the way he's able to like succinctly show like an idea off just mm. through like a couple of elements is amazing. Joey Yu. Like her work is very, very like loose, but it's so, so like atmosphere, like atmospheric. Yeah. Mm. Do you think it's important for illustrators and specifically to study first, to be able to draw things more realistically, to then be able to get to this stylized, uh, more illustrative version? Like obviously this artist, um, is you can tell that there is an underlying composition, um, the colors and everything. But some people might say it's a very simple illustration, almost childlike. So it's, it's that fine balance between being amateur in a way and the professional who is 
emulating that style. So do you think it's important to study the, the fundamentals? Is that like a must for every artist? I think it's important to understand like the fundamentals, say like composition, perspective, mm -hmm. color theory, like tone. I, I, me personally, I think it's important. But then like once you understand like the boundaries, you're able to like ignore them mm. and use them for effect. Um, I think the most important thing about illustration as a practice is the communication of an idea to an audience within a context. And I think as long as the message is clear, like it's got clarity, then I think the way you render it, the way you present your work, doesn't have to always be like aesthetically pleasing. Mm. Um, this is like amazingly like beautiful, like drawings and like paintings, but. Well, you have a, already a distinct style as well, and uh, obviously you are still exploring different mm. things. So most artists don't just settle for one thing, they would yeah. keep exploring, which is a good thing. But yeah, I think important to learn the basics, but um, I studied product design at university, but long before that I already started attending art classes and I've done uh, studies of anatomy, people, yeah. objects, all kinds of things. Then what I am struggling with is once I finished my art classes, I ended up doing more graphic design. So whenever I try to go back into drawing and illustration, I have to really remember to loosen up yeah. because I try to do everything more realistically and that's not necessarily a good thing because you don't want to make it look like a photograph. You want to make it like art, like this one. And uh, I think that's fine balance, finding how much you use what you've learned about real life and how much you transition into more something like an impression of real life. From far away, it looks slightly like realistic but a museum is literally just like pencil marks like abstract like mark making mm. and this is something that like, i found success with like before this i was spending way too long on a piece and it looked too stiff like mm. it didn't even look like realistic it just looked too stiff like labored and i think me freeing up and being more loose it gives like the piece like more energy I think what's, what's a very important lesson in general in illustration is that having an understanding of the fundamentals to be able to follow things like perspective, composition, colors, how they work in real life, but then have the flexibility to free up from it. So to, to break away and as you said, like loosen up. Yeah. And for this, it's a good, what you said, like, what type of exercises did you do to, to try to break away from it? I just got so frustrated <laughs> with my work that I was like, I just need to change, mm. like, how I'm doing this. So mm. I just, I took some time out from actually making and I analysed like, a bunch of different illustrators that I liked, like, how their process, mm. like, how they were applying marks, like, how they looked at certain things. And I just sort of, like, tried to, like, basically sort my own practice out about my own visual language. Mm. I'd look around like some, some galleries as well, like some of the old like masters, like Sargent, mm -hmm. where he does portraits. Like if you look back, it's like completely like photorealistic. Like, but when you go close, you go close, it's literally just like brush strokes. Mm. It's like, incredible. So I think I just tried to like emulate some of that into my own work. Like I zoom in here, like it's just like dots and like, Pencil scratches, really. Like it's not mm. really, but from a distance, it sort of looks. Yeah, I think that's that's very important to. It's like indicating something, but not trying to like replicating it. Yeah, it's it's like showing, not telling. So I think one of the biggest takeaways from just talking to you, and um, hopefully everyone enjoyed this conversation that we had. We we always try to look at someone's work but at the same time try to see the process and also just have a general understanding of what goes into doing illustrations or the work that uh, these creatives work on. But I think one of the biggest takeaway for me from this conversation was that although you are just in the beginning of your career, you already managed to win a big, big international competition. I think that is like a really good example of one thing that I talked about in our recent podcast, it's, I, I heard this term, uh, excited accountability. I don't know if you heard it. It's basically 
the state in which you were where you had to work on this project. Because it's something, a topic that you, you can relate to. There is a time pressure. You had to do it for your uni. Yeah. So yeah, there was the accountability from both sides being the final project for uni, which is huge, obviously. Yeah. That was like the most important project for uni. But then also for an important contest that you felt like you have a chance and you actually won. Uh, but yeah, these, these pressure were there constantly, but you having the two sides from one one side you were pressured but also really enjoying yeah. working on it and i think these are the things that really excel anyone in the work that they do so i think that's one thing that everyone should really remember to to aim for to find something either a competition or i don't know any project that you can think of where you will be accountable for finishing it so it's not just messing around, playing around, but you actually have to produce something, but something that you also really enjoy working on. It's, because otherwise, if you're not enjoying it, it's just work yeah. and it's not going to bring the best out of your skills and your talent. I think, yeah, your story uh, is a great example of that. And hopefully that will be useful advice for, for everyone. But um, thank you so much for showing your work and for coming along. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best and I'm sure you will be uh, like a very bright future is ahead of you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Jake. Let us know in the comment section what would you like us to cover next time on this series. Click on the link in the description or the join button to become a member if you want to work on future projects with us and see the whole design or illustration process live. Thanks a lot for watching, like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.